Well, here we are again. It's the second day of June, and uh, we're confined to home. Not really, but the uh, pandemic is still a concern every place and causing all sorts of issues. And so I thought I'd just take a moment here to uh, give a quick update. Not a whole lot new, needless to say, with not getting out much, but uh, that Amazon sword plant in the center here in the boat tank in the corner here, or I'm sorry, the corner tank, not the boat tank, the corner tank, the pie-shaped one, uh, 55 gallon, is just enormous. And there's another plant behind it. But this one, you recall, we took over from the boat tank just because it was taking over too much space there, and this one, I thought it fit better. So anyway, uh, it's been doing very well. The other plants, eh, not so. Haven't changed anything. Uh, so we're still doing that fertilization program of the CO2 dosage every day, leaf zone once a week, and plant tabs once a quarter. Uh, the fish are doing okay. I've moved a lot of the guppies from the office tank out into the larger tanks here. And I've noticed a couple bodies every once in a while that the fish are cleaning up. But uh, all in all, doing fairly well. You see it in the left there, those uh, angels that we moved over here from uh, the other tank. And uh, they seem to be thriving here. And so uh, we've got the two black ones, and these are the two that aren't all black. But the black one is down here. There he is. There's two of them. And I don't know where the other one is right now, but they seem to hang out together. But there's that Amazon sword. There's one of the tiger barbs left. And the green barb finally passed away, that one with the real fancy fins, uh, some month ago. And uh, it's summertime almost, all right? So some of the fish are, the fins are closed up a little bit. I've got to do a, uh, a water change today or tomorrow. Uh, don't know. Some people argue that you don't really need to do that. I... Uh, tend to do it once a week or once in a week and a half. There's a tricolored shark and right above it is the red tail shark that I love. There's two of them in here. And uh, a bunch of platies. And there's that angelfish again. But for the times where the Kabamba just overtook this tank that hasn't been a problem of recent. They're tiny, kind of spread out over here on the right, as you can see. And the fish seem to be eating off some of the uh, greenery. I'm not sure what that means. Something missing from their diet? I don't know. I've given quite a bit of variety, so I'm not sure why that would be. But anyway, it's, uh, as you'll see in the other tank, uh, see what I mean by the fins being closed down? The neons here are still, uh, a couple of them have a little bit of white spot on them, so there's a problem I haven't resolved yet. And uh, you saw in that one female swordtail right in the center here, she's having problems. She's just not going to do well. Don't know what's going on there. So, with nothing more to say here, let's move over to the other tank. Okay, we're now looking back at the bow tank here in the living room. And a couple of interesting things in this tank. Not, uh, it's growing much better than that corner tank. Don't know why, but for example, if you look at this spiral green plant, I, I know the plant, I can't think of its name, but aren't those leaves beautiful? It has come from nothing in the past couple of weeks to what you're seeing here, which is really a large sized plant right in the show area of the tank. And the uh, neons school so beautifully against that color of green. They really are doing very well. As I say, uh, there's no sign of any fungus or anything 
like we saw in the corner tank. Also, you see up here in the left, where did they just go? There's the, one of the Davidson barbs, I think they're called, or Davidson tetras, I'm not sure. Uh, there's three of them in here, and I've always admired them. And there, uh, there is the black molly I'll tell you about. But I want you to see how great a shape it has. See that lyre tail? And the top fin is so beautiful. There is a bunch of babies in here, as you will see, uh, that are from the office tank babies. Well, there's one of the other Davidson tetras. Or There's three of them. They tend to school together, but then again, they hang out separately, too. The other thing you see in there is a bunch of guppies that I've moved out from the office tank just to uh, reduce the population. There's so many tiny babies in there that I just wanted to give them more of a chance to grow. And so moved a bunch of them out here and you see them up toward the top. They tend to like to hang out in the flow of the filter. And we've got a bunch of split tail like that one there. That one looks more torn. Some of them are actually uh, as you'll see just to the left there. See that, that tail? That's a split tail. And so we've got some nice looking ones here. There's that beautiful male sword we've seen so often before. But what I really wanted to talk to about is the Kabamba. The Kabamba that you saw in the other tank was pretty emaciated. Here, especially the red Kabamba, we love the red Kabamba. You see those beautiful red florets almost on the ends of the stems. Uh, they're, they're not uh, flowers or anything like that. They're just red. And what happens is this time of the evening, right now it's about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and as the evening progresses, the lighting does not change. I leave the lighting on here from 7 in the morning, comes on, and it goes off at 10. And around 6, 7 o'clock, they start closing up. And I took some pictures that I'm going to superimpose on this to show you what I'm talking about, uh, that show the progress of them closing up and eventually being so tightly lit, knit, uh, they, they almost look like buds, and so you'll see those. And here's that sequence I promised you. Look at the plants as they change from that bright open to closing, closing, and now they almost look like buds. You'll see those. But the other thing that's really working out well, as you can see here, is the green kabamba, and it's really filling up this corner of the tank again. And so the fish certainly enjoy it. And I've got a bunch of those black mollies because the mother and father of those black mollies are uh, really producing nice number of babies. And as soon as they get to where they're not going to get eaten out here, I tend to move them out. There's one of those other Davidson tetras. And there's three of them, as I said. The small angels that we got are doing well, as you can see here. There's the other of those Davidson fish. Very pretty fish. Very expensive in my line of thinking uh, when they get to a decent size. But if I pick them up uh, beyond my normal buying price, these I think were like $13. Uh, that's pretty high for me, because I don't want to regret when something happens to die. But they're doing very well, as you can see. My red tail sharks, which are always in all three tanks. Uh, I've gotten to the... this is a tricolored shark, I'm sorry. The tricolored sharks and the red tail sharks that do very well. Uh, in all the tanks. Uh, just love that dark black body as opposed to the uh, colorful tails. I'm trying to think what else is going on in this particular tank. It, it's doing very well and uh, like I say I do a water change about a third of the tank once every week, week and a half and uh, there's those two barbs hanging out together that are 
I don't know if they're Barbara or Tetris, the Davidson ones. But, uh, oh, the other plant that I wanted to show you is down here. And again, completely by surprise, because I didn't even know I had a bulb left from when we had a plant some time ago. But those leaves are very large right now. And they've developed in the past two weeks from nothing. I mean, I didn't know they were there. And then from underneath one of the green plants, you saw some reddish leaves starting to come out. And this week, they're full-grown leaves. And just a beautiful plant. And so, like I said, this tank is doing very well plant-wise. And the fish are very healthy. And every once in a while, especially the, uh, the guppies, every once in a while, I'll lose one of them. But uh, the fish tend to clean it up. I mean, they're a small guppy in the first place. And... Uh, those uh, sh red tailed sharks and the tricolored sharks, they get at it, and there's a pleco or two. The ones you don't see right now, and I have not, I don't know what's going on with them either, is the clown loaches. Remember the clown loaches from the office tank that I moved out here? Well, I put in two of these ceramic logs so there's a place for them to hang out in, and they hang out in there. And this, I thought for a while, maybe I lost them. But then last, this past week, they've been out running around a little bit, but they are very skittish. You come in anywhere near this tank, and boy, they dis disappear just like that. But if you step back far enough, they'll just keep going round and round and round and round. Uh, so it's one of those fish that you say, why don't I buy a fish that you can't see? <laughs> but they hang out together in one of those two logs. So uh, they're doing well, they're looking good, and when they're out, they're beautiful. All right, don't want to make this too long. Just wanted to do a quick catch up. The other thing that's going to be happening soon, we do have that half barrel pond log, a uh, pond rather, out in our garden. Uh, Pam has filled it up with water. She's got rocks in it. And the other day she picked up some plants from the pond store. And so we're waiting for the temperatures to stay in the high 60s or low 70s for a couple of days in a row, a week or so before we put any fish out there and totally uh, not sure what fish to put out there at this point. It's always fun to put some live bears out there and see what happens when you go to bring them in in the fall. Uh, so we'll see. But meanwhile, that's what's going on here. It's, uh, like I said, June 2nd, 2020, and uh, life is good. Just a quick uh, view of the office tank now that doesn't have many big fish in it. It does have a red tail shark in it, the one that wasn't growing big in the other tanks. And you may or may not see it come out. Some, uh, a couple guppies. And there's that red tail shark down. Just off to the left, we'll see if he comes back. Uh, main fish here are that pair of black mollies I was telling you about. They are doing very well. As Molly's did years ago when I had two of them in here that were huge and really produced a lot of young which grew up in the other tanks and then over time I mean over a year or two just totally disappeared again. Here comes one of those black mollies now. It just got lost in the greenery there. So it's hard to tell because this is filled with literally hundreds of tiny baby fish of all different types. Uh, there's some sword tails in there, there's a bunch of guppies of course, and then you'll see against the light maybe some of the black mollies that, uh, as I said, I move out when uh, they get to a point where they can survive in the other tanks, I think it gives them more of a chance to grow up. Uh, but there's probably, I'm going to guess, and maybe you can see a bunch of them here, uh, I'm going to guess there's maybe 30 or so of different uh, groups that have been born together and then uh, another group. Uh, she is always very, very pregnant. And so in one sense, I'm sort of disappointed that there aren't hundreds of these very beautiful liar tail black mollies. What I'm really looking for at this point, uh, and I have not really tried to do it online. I, I wish I could find some really beautiful black sail, sail fin mollies, you know, the kind that have like an orange tint on the edge of their fins, nice tall fins. Uh, 
black with that orange tip. I haven't seen them around in a long while. When Bruce and I were out fishing sometime recently, we did come across one shop that had them. Uh, something similar, but we didn't just trust that shop. They didn't have prices on things. Uh, it was just a crazy shop. And so we didn't buy anything there. Instead, we went to lunch across the street. This was up in the southern border of New York. Uh, maybe I should have bought them. I don't know. It's too far away to go back to, given what we found there. But uh, you see a couple of them right there, the black mollies. But they do uh, seem to maintain a very pretty finage. The liar tail is beautiful, and I've seen more and more of those liar tail black mollies out there. Bruce has a pair of, of uh, black mollies that are doing very well that he got online. And uh, they've been having some babies, so I'm looking forward to getting up to North Jersey and seeing what he's got going on with those ten tanks of his. Uh, I love the fact that he's got a, a cot or a bed down in his fish room that uh, when he goes down he can just relax and fall asleep and wake back up, feed the fish, and go back upstairs for supper or something. But anyway, uh, plants are shielded here from the light by a large Amazon sword plant. And so they tend to be on the squiggly, squiggly side, scarce leaves. Um, but uh, anyway, that's what's going on here. And I just wanted to complete our visit with a short stay here. And I, like I say, not they tend to hide in the back. And so uh, we haven't been too lucky seeing them this trip. Until next time, okay? You take care.